Coming up in this very special Brightline Construction Update, we leave Florida and head across the country to California. I was in California to see how Brightline's trains are manufactured while touring the Siemens Mobility Rolling Stock Factory. The Siemens factory is located just south of Sacramento in Florin, California. Brightline had brought me out to California to attend their media event, which toured Siemens' expansive factory where the locomotives and passenger cars are manufactured, as well as to see their newest train before it departed for Florida. The tour began with brief presentations from Siemens North American President of Rolling Stock, Michael Cahill, and from Brightline CEO Michael Reininger before we started the tour in the final assembly area. So we are in the final assembly area of this uh, rail manufacturing plant. What we're going to walk through is the area where we go right now vehicles first and then we will end up in front of a Brightline locomotive. In the end of this hall that's where the final assembly for locomotives takes place. Prior to entering the heavy rail passenger rolling stock market in the 2010s, Siemens had been producing streetcars and light rail vehicles for several decades here in Sacramento, and it still makes up a significant part of their business. These cars will soon be running in places like San Francisco, Orange County, California, San Diego, Minneapolis, and Phoenix. Here's one of Brightline's newest locomotives that is being finished for the second train that will depart later this year. Sections of its roof are on the ground here as the interior is being finished. Here is the back of the locomotive, something that is typically not seen when they are attached to a train set. And here is what the nose looks like without the nose cone attached. There is a standard coupler located there for times when multiple trains are coupled together or a standard locomotive needs to be attached, like when they are transported from California to Florida. We'll head into the cab next. And then, and then they have all the controls behind them and on the back of the screen. So they will pull down and they'll have a, they'll the screens. So they are in the process of finishing to install all of the wiring and equipment in the cab, with everything still exposed until that happens. Here is the hall back to the engine room and a look back down that hall to the cab. There's a small bathroom on the left. And here is the 16-cylinder EPA Tier 4 compliant Cummins QSK95 engine that powers the locomotive. This is what is inside the big vents on the side of the locomotive. Diesel motor powers the generator that sends electricity to, the, to this unit here to this electric power to power the electric motor. That's the brake equipment there. This is what I'm looking at right now? Yeah, and behind you is the traction. And here is the cooling for the motors. Get stuck in here. It's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of moving parts. Space, but it's, uh, it's quite a complex machine. And, uh, everything has to be accessible to maintain it. So that's, that's the trick is getting all those in and making sure you get to get to One of the vents on the side of the locomotive can double as a door as well. With one last look at the nose. We will now head off to our next stop. Outside the final assembly building, the parts that will be used soon are staged. Here's a quick look around the facility as we are taken to the next building where the locomotive car bodies are built. Lots of parts and other rolling stock are stored along the way. 
So this is how, from the ground up, we built a locomotive car body. Uh, what you can see in here is there's four stations set up. We're coming in from this end, which is the finished car body. We'll walk past that, so that's station four. We'll come past station three on the right hand side. You see how the sidewalk are being welded. And you see station three, which is a, a car body. And it has a cab on it. And then you see station two, which is a the frame and then we go to station one where you see a modest fixture which is where we drop the steel parts into the frame. Okay? Then from there because it's 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 a little loud in size I'll make it raise now. Then then we'll look around we'll see how a tank is built. And that's how we'll sort of have the integrated tank into the car body. We come around and you see the, the uh, can being rolled together. The uh, cat. And then we move out this way again to the bodies for Brightline's locomotives are all complete, so they are working on locomotives for Amtrak and Via Rail Canada while we went through. Other than a different nose, there is very little that is different from how Brightline's are assembled at this stage. Here is a locomotive with only one of the sides attached so far. The fuel tank is built into the frame of the locomotive instead of being a separate piece. Here is the bottom frame flipped upside down to provide workers an easier way to work on the underside. large sub assemblies that get built in a building further in this direction uh, get then uh, put in here and adjusted to the, the exact dimensions and then you start welding the other frame and after this step you get on the frame like this. Here's a fuel tank being assembled prior to being integrated right, into the frame. There's many requirements uh, for tanks, FRA requirements and so forth. It's a very, very strong structure. This tank has to be able to roll on a, on a rail without leaking. It has to take a rail sticking out of the ground uh, on impact without leaking. It's got a very complicated structure for filling and keeping the diesel in place with baffle plates so that the diesel doesn't slush around. You can see some of the structure. You see the... Uh, um, Longitudinal beams for the 800,000 uh, pound compression strength of the overall locomotive running straight through, through this tank as well. You see a very sophisticated filling system. Uh, there, there's more requirements on uh, leak proofing uh, in a uh, locomotive tank. So if a, if a locomotive rolls over, um, only a very minute amount of diesel can spill. <laughs> Moving along, here on the left is a completed locomotive cab ready to be attached to a frame. And here is a look at the same locomotives we saw as we entered this building, but now from a different point of view.
here are some wheels waiting to be used. Next to that building are passenger car sides that are ready to be used to build two cars. Um, so we have the, the hard shell production is here. If you think of a passenger coach, and our engineers wouldn't like it, if you think of it like a rectangular box, uh, you have uh, the bottom of the box, which is called the underframe. That's one of the components we do here. Then we do the, the side walls, the side of the box, the end walls at the end of the box, and then the roof is all done here. And then we assemble it all together into the full coach car shell on that side over there. So we're going to walk around here. To start off, you'd see side walls, then we get, we'd see the roof. And, and uh, we get to the, the end walls, and then we we'll do the underframe and come back, and then you'll see, as we go around, you'll see the complete car shell. Um, one feature here that we're very proud of is our robot. So we do, we have automated uh, welding here. So it's a spot weld robot. We actually have two robots on this uh, gantry here. And we have on this car, we use a lot of spot welding. There's about 50,000 spot welds on a car shell. And it's all done in, this, in these robots here. And in the integration fixture where we put it all together, all these parts I've talked about, to complete the box, we have also a robot that welds seam welds along the top and bottom of, this, of the car. It's about 85 foot long weld. So that has to be very accurate and precise. So we use a robot for that as well. So then walk through. Behind this yellow frame is where one of those robotic welders is located. The frame for a car side is being assembled on the left here. These are several sections of frame that will be combined to make up a car side. This is a form for one of the components. Materials that will be used to make the roofs are stacked here. This gap in the roof is where one of the air conditioners for the car will go. One of the differences between Brightline's coaches and other railroads are the roofs. The sides on Brightline's roofs are sleek and flat like this one. The others, like the other behind this, have ridges on them. Here are some more forms. This is where work is done on the bottom frames. Since this one has stairs, it is not going to be a Brightline coach. 
Brightlines don't have stairs, since all their stations have high-level platforms. Beyond the stairs, there's not much of a difference in the frames at this step of the process. Walking here, the frame on the left is flipped over while the one on the right is not, providing a look at both sides simultaneously. There are some more sides ready to be attached to the frame. This is where the end of the car is attached. Here's a closer look at some of the side panels. These will become part of a via rail coach. The ends for several cars are stacked here. Here's one of the bottom frames sitting on its side. By the time the cars reach this area, all of the major components are assembled, with finishing touches to the shell being completed. Here's a look down a bare, empty car. This is the building where final assembly is completed. The coach on the right here is for Brightline. For the car shells you saw over there. Before they come in here, they get the windows, they get air conditioning units on the roof, 
So everything that everything, the doors are installed so that the cars are watertight. So we actually do a water test on the car before it comes in here. So it's completely sealed. And in here we do all the interior insulation and all the insulation under the car. So we cut off with undercar, wiring, stabling, and we do equipment that goes into the car. And then we progressively do more interior work as we go down. Here's a car for another railroad farther down the line. Besides having larger doors that cover the steps, those cars also have standard couplers instead of drawbars like Brightline's. That allows those railroads to change the constants easier, but results in more slack action along the train, causing a bumpier ride. So as the cars go down this way, they get more equipment installed. So the end for their Here's another Brightline car on the left. These cars are on temporary shock trucks, which raise them up to give workers easier access underneath. The cars on the right here will be used on the San Joaquins here in California. So we're going to go through a car that's not fully assembled, it's close to final assembly, completion. We're going to go through that car and then we'll head out to the train set. So you kind of get a view of the step before that we get uh, everything in there. The seats aren't in here yet, there's some other things that need to be installed. Did you get a picture of what, what happens in the assembly? Yeah. Obviously, we don't have any seats. The obvious missing piece, but some other components are also still This way is for Brightline. This is a Brightline car for the next uh, train set. So this will be going uh, with the second train set. To Orlando. This one will be going to Orlando. That's correct. So air conditioning uh, comes to the ceiling and also through the sides. So these are these are um, there's a cavity in the sidewall for the air. So we send hot air up here and underneath uh, at the bottom where the warm air can come out and rise up, which is very good for circulation. Cold air mostly comes from the top. Which in Florida is important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see large windows. I mean, that's one of the features of the cars. We work quite a bit, and we work together with Florida to develop that. Uh, picture windows to really have bright interiors and, and good visibility out of the cars. Obviously, there's a lot of things you can't see in the ceiling, all the ducting, all the wiring is all hidden. So, you kind of get a little idea of what might be up there from some of the openings. That's all just closed up. Yeah, at this point, I have to get the wall panels in there, whatever. Now it's the ceiling. The ceiling can't be closed enough. Any questions before we. Okay. Heading out to see the new train 
and this is an area where cars and locomotives are stored between different steps in the assembly process. Having extra available at any given time is useful so they never run out of work, even if there is temporary disruption in the supply chain. This is a future Brightline car on the left, and an Amtrak locomotive on the right. And here is a quick tease of Brightline's newest train, the second Bright Red. We will take a closer look at this train in my next video. I would like to thank Brightline for bringing me to California to document how their trains are made. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Also check out my social media pages 